Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gertubo4 here bringing you another Minecraft Forward 2 vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the SD KFZ 2316 Rad. This uh, vehicle here was part of the Skiver uh, Panzer Spotwagen, uh, which uh, was basically translated from German to Heavy Armored Reconnaissance Vehicle. Uh, in this series, there were a six and eight wheeled variants uh, of armored cars that were used by Germany during World War II. In the German army, armored cars were intended to be uh, the traditional kind of cavalry missions of reconnaissance and screening, and they scouted ahead and to the flank of advancing mechanized units to assess enemy location, strength, and attention. Their primary role was reconnaissance, but they would engage similar or light units and at times uh, attempt to capture enemy patrols. This version more specifically is the SD KFZ 231 as I mentioned earlier. This was the first of the German armored cars. This uh, version was based on a modified uh, Daimler Benz uh, Brissin or Magris uh, 6x4 truck chassis. The 231 was equipped was armed with a 2cm KWK 30L-55 autocannon and a uh, machine gun uh, MG13 machine gun. It, was, it had a second driver's position in the rear so that the vehicle could be driven either forwards or backwards with relative ease. The 231 was introduced into service in 1932 and began to be replaced in 1937 when the German army switched production to 8-wheeled armored cars instead of 6-wheeled. Despite being replaced, they were used by the uh, Aufklarungs, uh, or basically uh, the reconnaissance units during the invasion of Poland and the Battle of France, and in the invasion of the USSR. They were withdrawn afterwards for use in internal security and training. The crew consisted of a commander, gunner, driver, and a radio operator uh, slash rear driver. So uh, overall, really interesting vehicle and one of those kind of very early World War II uh, vehicles. Um, this uh, vehicle obviously is painted in the kind of gray camo scheme as was most German military vehicles in the early kind of stages of World War II and kind of like the interwar period. So uh, that's why it's in the gray kind of color scheme and everything like that to show its early um, kind of purpose and early uh, service in the German military. Um, anyways, going ahead and taking, or actually before we do take a look at it, I want to go and give special links to Patreon supporter Brock Cherry for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you guys already do, feel free to check out the Patreon page down, uh, link down in the description where you guys can go ahead and pledge a small amount of uh, monies to go toward uh, myself uh, every month and it will support the channel, help support me, and you get a vehicle request of your choice. So it really uh, helps me out big time and is a uh, great way to help me out with the channel and all that stuff, especially with YouTube's you know, crappy ad revenue. Anyways, uh, going ahead and diving into it, let's take a look at the uh, build itself, see exactly where we're going ahead and building. So uh, to go ahead and start off with, obviously we have the front up here. Um, it's got a very kind of long uh, flat front, which is uh, pretty interesting. It's got two front headlights, of course, on the front here. Um, it's a little uh, mirrors here for the drivers, or for the driver um, so himself. You got the driver's viewport hatch up on top here. Uh, just the kind of shaping of the vehicle all the way overall. Um, I actually really do like the way this vehicle came out shape wise. It's pretty cool looking um, But it, it's besides that we got the turret up on top here uh, Obviously you have the coaxial machine gun and also the 20 millimeter main auto cannon uh, Continuing on to the back here. You got the rear section here. So this is where the um, second driver could operate the vehicle from uh, tail lights and a spare tire mount on the back overall really nice vehicle and I love the way it came out and hope you guys can all enjoy it as well as I mentioned it's one of those early war vehicles so it's going to go really good with like a Panzer 1 uh, some Panzer 2s stuff like that uh, maybe a Panzer 3 uh, just some early kind of war tanks and like early scenarios or just you know simply stationed with a reconnaissance uh, unit within some kind of battle scene or whatever you guys got going on anyways hope you guys can enjoy the vehicle and without further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with layer number one all right guys so going ahead and moving on to our first layer we'll be going ahead and beginning with layer number one for layer one to begin with we're going to place down two narrow brick stairs uh back to back like this and this could be the start here the right front tire from this, we're going to place down a Arcacia wood top slab coming off this uh, narrow brick up down stair, followed by an iron trap door and then another Arcacia wood top slab. We then want to place down a narrow brick upside down stair, upside down stair coming off the back of it to create the uh, left front wheel and the half like that. 
Now going back from this iron trap door, we're gonna go ahead and play or skip one, two, and uh, sorry, my bad, just two spaces back from this iron trap door. In which after that, we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five um, iron trap doors that go back like so. Now going ahead and going to the third iron trap door in this row, we're gonna place down a acacia wood top sub to both sides here, and we're gonna put in another wheel. So we're gonna place down there, break up down stair, uh, or a stair right behind it and same thing over here just like that for your second axle where they're gonna go ahead and go to this last iron trap door back here place down a case wood top sub on again on both sides here and then another break upside down stair come to the side and one on the back same thing over here just like that and then uh, any place or blocks whatever we can go and delete and we have something that looks just like this looking at from up above here's a little bit of a side view and you get a general idea of what we got going on here. Basically just our three axles and basically the base chassis set up for us to go and work on um, for the previous or the next uh, few layers. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number two. All right guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, we're gonna start off by placing down two narrow brick stairs back to back on top of these narrow brick um, upside down stairs like this for all the wheels. And this will just go ahead and kind of complete the wheel design um, and kind of round them off completely. So we're just going to go and do this to each one of our six wheels and we get something that looks just like that. Now once that's all done, we're going to place down a anvil on these iron trap doors that are in the center in between the acacia wood top slabs like that for the chassis, followed by cobblestone walls to both sides here for kind of like the shocks suspension um, for the uh, vehicle itself. Uh, once that's done, going ahead and focusing back up to the front here, we're going to place down a polished anzite block coming off this anvil toward the front fall by a stone brick upside down stair to both sides of this polished downside block. Uh, we're then going to place down a stone brick upside down corner stair coming off this uh, upside down stair to both sides and a quartz upside down stair there in the middle. After that's all done, we're going to take our polished downside, place down a row of three across here, fall by a stone brick stair to both sides. We then want to place down another row of three of polished downside across, fall by a cobblestone wall. So real quickly, one uh, quick adjustment we want to make is we actually want to go and delete these two rows of two there of polished downside. So we only have a row of two down in the middle there. Uh, my apologies, just with like the angle I was looking at this uh, design over here, I kind of messed up and didn't really catch that. But you want to make sure it's just like this. Um, anyways, when we get to that point, we're going to have this iron trap door here. We're going to place down a cobblestone wall on top of it, followed by a sign on both sides of this cobblestone wall. We then want to take our polished downside blocks, place down one, come off this cobblestone wall, going back toward the anvil. Uh, coming off this snare brick stair uh, toward the front, we're going to place down a stone brick stair like this. Uh, in the space in the middle here, we're going to take polished downside, place down a row of three going across there to fill that space in. In between these snare brick stairs here, we're going to place down a row of three of polished downside that goes across. On the very back here, we're going to place down a row of three of stone brick stairs, stone brick, regular stair on both sides here. And then we just want to have a dark oak fence gate come off the two stone brick stairs here on the sides there. And once that's all done, you should get something that kind of looks like this from up above, chassis-wise and everything like that. You can start to see the vehicle coming together. Uh, but other than that, that's going to do it for layer uh, number uh, two. And with that, we can move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving on to our uh, next layer. We have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair here that's going to go on top of these uh, two stone brick upside down corner stairs. In between these two stone brick stairs, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab. Once that's done, going back from these stone brick stairs, we're going to place down a stone brick stair like this. So we turn this stair right here in the front to a corner stair. And then in between these two stairs here, just a polished downside block to fill that space in. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some signs here. We're going to place down a sign on the side of this stone brick corner stair here. Same thing over here to this side. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a glass block and also a item frame uh, from our creative menu. We're going to place down an item frame coming off this uh, this uh, sign here followed by a glass block in the item frame same thing over here and we can then just go ahead and place down a sign coming off that sign right there for a nice kind of front headlight type of look uh continuing on we're gonna go and place down a uh placeholder block here on top of this first narrow brick stair here for the wheels we're gonna go ahead and place a skeleton skull at a slight angle so maybe about 30 degrees there on both sides and then we can delete the block underneath those skulls and then place down a end rod that goes up like that for the side mirrors uh, once that's done, uh, across the middle space here, we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite, followed by a iron trap door to both sides. We then want to place down a stone brick um, upside down stair, which is going to go across like that and grab our anvil, do the same. 
Uh, we're going to place Dying Stone Break upside down stair like this. Polish Dance Safe Block in the middle. And a Nurse Stone Break upside down stair to the side. On top of this Stone Break stair here, we're going to place down a anvil on top for like a little like detail bit of uh, some kind of equipment attached onto the sides there. Uh, going ahead and continue on, we're going to place down a Nurse Polish Dance Safe Block in the middle. Followed by a uh, Stone Break upside down stair here on both sides of it. Uh, we then want to place down a Nurse Row 3 of Polish Dance Safe Across. Followed by a cobblestone wall on both ends of this row 3 polished andesite. Uh, we're then going to go ahead and repeat this pattern a total of four more times. So we're going to place down four more rows of three. So one, two, three, and four back. And then we're just going to place down one, two, three, and four cobblestone walls on the side here. And one, two, three, and four. Once that's done, we're going to place down a row 3 polished andesite across the middle here. Followed by an iron trap door on this narrow brick stair to both sides. Uh, we then want to place down another row of three of polished dance side across the back here. Uh, like we did in the front, we're going to place down a sign on both sides here of this polished dance side blocks, followed by an item frame like that on both sides. And then in the item frame, we're going to place down a red stained glass block. And of course, we're going to place down a sign also coming off the sign right here to create a nice uh, back tail light look. Now also on the back here, um, if you do not want to include the spare tire, you're just going to place down a row of three of cobblestone walls across the back here. But if you do want to put the spare tire on, very simply, we can go and just replace two of these cobblestone walls to the side here with two uh, upside down narrow brick stairs like that for the rear wheel. Um, of course, you don't need to include that. You have your alternative there, but I do think it looks pretty good with the back wheel um, spare tire put on. Anyways, that's going to do it for layer number three. With that, let's move on to layer number four. All right, guys, move on to our next layer. We have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to place down an iron trap door on this polished andesite block. Going back from the iron trap door, we want to go ahead and place down a row of what is going to be one, two, and three stone brick slabs back, followed by a stone brick slab out to both sides of this um, third stone brick slab. We then want to go ahead and go to the second stone brick slab here in that row of three, place down an iron trap door to uh, both sides of it like that for the front there. Once that's done, we're going to place down a stone brick slab over here on the right side, followed by a polished andesite block in the middle, and then a stone slab full block to the right side like that. On a uh, the side here of this stone brick uh, slab here, we're going to place down a uh, stone brick stair on top of the cobblestone wall, and same thing over here on the other side. And going back from this stone brick stair, we're going to place down one more, so we turn the stair into a corner stair. Behind this uh, stone brick slab, we're going to place down a black wool block, followed by one and two polished andesite blocks over to the side. We're then going to place down a row three of polished andesite across the middle here, stone brick up down stair to both sides. We then want to place down a row three of stone brick slabs across of, uh, sorry, uh, polished dance site blocks across, followed by again a stone brick stair on both sides. Uh, no row three polished dance site across, stone brick corner stair on both sides like that. On the back section here, we're going to place down a polished dance site block in the middle, stone slab full block on both sides. On the side of the stone slab full blocks, we're going to place down a item frame with a black wool block in it like that for a little viewport there. Uh, and then across the back, just a row of three of stone brick slabs. If you did, you went ahead and include the uh, spare tire. Uh, we're going to place down two narrow brick stairs back to back on top of the two narrow brick ups and down stairs like that for the back spare tire. Once that's done, that's going to do it for layer number four. With that, we'll move on to our last final layers. Layers five through six. We're going to put the turret on top and pretty much finish the build off. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to our last final layers, we have uh, layers 5 through 6. So for these layers, we're going to be putting the turret on, so let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this stone brick slab up here in the front. Um, once that's done, we can then go ahead and place down a polished andesite block here on this polished andesite block right here. So just on top of it, and it's going to be in the middle, followed by a stone brick upside down stair like this to both sides. Coming off the... Um, Middle polished andesite block. We're going to place down a couple blocks going forward and then a wither skeleton skull. We're then going to delete these two blocks and then place down two end rods um, connected in their place to make the 20 millimeter barrel uh, cannon right here. And then over here to the right side of the turret, so this way over here, we're going to place down the coaxial MG13 by placing down a end rod coming off that stone brick stair. Once that's done, we're going to place down a polished andesite block here in the middle, followed by a cobblestone wall to both sides of it. Also on the side of the cobblestone wall, we're gonna place down a wooden sign, just like that. After that's done, we're gonna place down a row of three of polished andesite blocks across, stone brick stair in the middle, stone brick corner stair on both sides of that stone brick stair. Uh, we also wanna go and place down a iron trap door on this polished andesite block, followed by a light gray carpet to both sides like that. Uh, off for the top of the turret, to go ahead and finish the build off, we're gonna place down an iron trap door on this polished andesite block up in front here, 
fall by a row of two of Stonebrick slabs back. We then want to grab ourselves a zombie head or skeleton skull, sorry, and place them down at a slight 30 degree angle. And same thing over here, facing the kind of doing the opposite here. So just like that, to kind of create a little bit more curvature to the turret. Same thing over here, just like that to create that curvature that we need for the turret. Anyways, once that's all complete, that's going to pretty much do it for the SD KFZ um, 2316 Rad uh, Armored uh, Car. I hope you guys did enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you guys do end up using it, uh, do be sure to give me credit for it. This will be the link from some of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if there's are paying social media sites. Just be sure to get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for when doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on. Again, a big thanks to Brock Cherry for making this uh, tutorial possible. And, uh, you know, uh, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is down in the description. And that, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.